So is this what it's come to? You're just going to sit there and pretend everything's fine? As if we all can't see what you've just done? And what saddens me most of all, some people won't even know. They won't even care. Maybe even like it better this way. And you disappoint me too. The fact I even have to break this down. The top Disney Pixar Luca. Not bad. I actually like that. Only two Pixar films to date have a character's name in the title. Coco and Wally, both timeless classics in my opinion. But as we go back and you move down past the Disney Presents a Pixar, Disney Plus original movie. Is this what you want Pixar to become, Disney? Is this how callously you view what some may consider to be your strongest asset, at least when it comes to animation? I get we're still kind of in the unprecedented times and no one knows what the future of cinemas is, but you're going out of your way to start up this whole Disney Plus premiere access thing that isn't exactly popular, but understandable so you can still achieve profitable box office success. You know, the likes of Mulan, Cruella, and most aptly Raya and the Last Dragon spring to mind, which I'm not gonna try and jump on the hate train here. I actually really liked Raya and the Last Dragon, but you do have what I would consider to be two far superior movies being Soul and Luca just getting thrown straight onto Disney Plus, no theatrical release, and now even the poster, the trailers are calling it a Disney Plus original movie? I'm not even mad. Okay, I'm a little mad, but I'm mostly dis- you know what? It's fine, let's just- oh my god. <sighs> so I watched the new- Disney Plus original movie, Luca, this week. And I had a good time with it. Like, I genuinely laughed out loud quite a few times throughout the movie, and I thought it was really well balanced with the more emotional beats as well. Like, I'm not gonna try and parade it around as this is the best Pixar film I've ever seen in my life. Matter of fact, I'd probably say it's Pixar's worst film since Cars 3. But it's not my fault that all the movies since then have been really, really good, okay? This movie is still undeniably enjoyable, and I'm pretty sure most people will have a good time with it, it's just not going to cement itself among Pixar's best for them. However, with that said, Pixar's best or not, I'm still not done with the fact it deserved a cinematic release. Least, especially with a movie like this taking place somewhere that will feel very foreign to most people watching it. In a similar way to Coco, or even Soul that also wasn't released in cinemas, don't get me started, it's almost a cultural experience watching something like this. It kept reminding me of a trip I took to Italy a few years ago, and it feels like such a distant memory now, but I'm so glad it could bring that back for me, and I feel like a cinematic experience can make it feel like you were really there in Porto Rosso. Like everything from the music, which did an excellent job at setting the tone, to just every small, tiny, minor detail to give you a full immersive experience of being in this town in Italy. Like, this movie is cinema! Except for the fact it's not. I mean, if we're really gonna try and find a silver lining here, at least there's no excuse for not watching this one, because I always see people saying, I hate Pixar, all they do is make sequels now. Like, they literally made Finding Dory, Cars 3, Incredibles 2, and Toy Story 4 in consecutive years. Yes, I paid to watch all of them and will probably never watch Onward, but I'm on film Twitch and therefore must get angry about but with this one, is right there, available to watch, for free. If you've got Disney Plus, that is, in which case then, you'd be paying the subscription every month. And if you don't have Disney Plus, then, I guess you could ask one of your friends who does, if you can use their account. And if you're gonna be sharing passwords online, you're gonna want to do it safely, which is where today's sponsor, NordPass, comes in. Because as a password manager, they create and store all your passwords in one place. Organizing your logins and private notes in a secure password vault, only providing access with a single master password. Meaning, if you're sharing passwords with people online, a thing I know people do, matter of fact, if I wanted to, I could share a bunch of my friends' passwords with you right now. I'm not going to because they're my friends, but my point is if you're sharing passwords through text or email, that can quite frankly be dangerous. Third parties could easily intercept them. However, using NordPass, you can share all your passwords securely as they ensure all your data will remain encrypted if you want to send a password to someone. And if by chance you happen to fall out with the person you just shared a password with, fear no more, because alongside just remembering all your passwords for you, they also have a password health feature which will check if your passwords are weak, older than 90 days, or being used for several accounts. So you can just change it to a nice new random jumble of letters and characters and they won't be able to access your account anymore. Everyone wins, except the people trying to access your accounts and passwords. They lose, so... Actually, mostly just you win. And right now, NordPass are having their summer kickoff sale right on time of the Euros, and you can get 70% off at nordpass.com slash Seamus or using code Seamus at nordpass.com, and you'll get an extra month for free. Checking it out would help out the channel a lot, and where were we? Was I complaining about how Luca wasn't released to cinemas? Because 
I'm starting to think that might just be this entire video, actually. And yes, I'm sure some of you cynics out there are probably thinking, well, I actually prefer it this way. I get to watch it for free. How would you even know if it looks good in cinema, Seamus? You haven't seen it in... Well, I'm gonna stop you right there. Because that's where you're wrong, kiddo. I got this ticket to go in. It's nice. It... I got a beer, but I gotta wear a mask, so it's kind of pointless. But we're going in to watch Luca in cinemas. In cinemas. And that's something not many people get to do. Yeah, I went to an event. They tried to make it feel like Italy. I drank and ate pizza by the dock, and it also rained the entire time, which is kind of foreshadowing. The vlog is back. Who would have guessed? 2021 saw the comeback of the vlog. <laughs> Seamus, no mask. You didn't see that. There must be some theme of like laundry. No, but this in is this Italy. Theme? They would hang the. Is that what they do in Italy? I, well, there we like... go, culture. You guys see this? That's that's Luca on a cinema screen. So there's all these like deck chairs. And I, I'm I'm watching the film on the screen. That's that, that's me, and that, that that's the screen. And yeah, that was my cinematic experience with Luca, reminding me of my time in Italy, cultural experience, all that, and. Unfortunately, I actually ended up uh, getting kicked out because there were some lemons on display and, well, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? She's never gonna leave. <laughs> guys, guys, you know, a lesson in life, don't steal lemons. <laughs> when you steal lemons in life, you don't this make lemonade or something like this that. This is not gonna be a good... And with that, let's get into the spoilers. So, if you haven't seen the film, you should probably go watch it. But also, I don't really want my viewer attention to be bad, so can you, like, pause this video and then come back and watch it after you've seen the film? Or just don't worry about spoilers. There aren't actually that many spoilers for this film. Oh my god, they were actually sea monsters the entire time! That's pretty much the extent of it. And now, I should preface that I did watch this film sitting next to Vegard, and he was essentially complaining this film was queerbaiting the entire time. And like, let me just... I that. just want to say for the Seamus Gorman fans, this is the gayest film I've ever seen yeah, that was I mean, not gay. I, yeah, even I was like, that was, there needed something in there. And I definitely feel like it had some gay storyline missing in there, you know. From Luca having full-on visions of him and Alberto living out their life together, to Alberto's serious daddy issues, and spending the entire film being jealous of his one male friend, Bonding with a girl, and that final scene? Uh, um, what do we do here? Yeah, just cut to the train! Like, Disney got cold feet so bad. Matter of fact, it genuinely feels like Pixar wrote a gay storyline until their corporate overlords Disney decided, Nope, you got your representation with Onward and we can't be doing that again! My girlfriend's daughter got me pulling my hair out. Leading to a lot of moments feeling like they'd been changed to try and appease certain people and countries to help this film do better, but then it didn't even come out to cinemas. So, the entire set of events is Disney asked to make this film less gay so it does better in certain countries, and then Covid happens, so it doesn't ever come out to cinemas, no one has to buy this film, meaning the decision to make it less gay is completely pointless, and happy pride everyone! I'm sorry, I genuinely do feel bad, and since I know Pixar have a lot of diverse people working for them and have made shorts with LGBT representation in the very recent past, it wouldn't surprise me at all if this movie had been straightened out by Disney. But with that said, I still did enjoy the dynamic they had between Luca and Alberto. It very much pulls at your heartstrings at times, and even a lot of the scenes with Luca and Julia, which are probably the straightening out parts, I kind of like that too. When they're looking through the telescope and exploring the stars, any and all the Luna vibes are great. Top 5 Pixar shorts easily, and I'm so glad Enrico Casarosa. Sorry, I don't know when that went so Italian, but it sounded like a great pronunciation, and I think he did a really good job with this. My only other real major criticism is I feel like they set up a lot of storylines without ever giving us a payoff. You know, like you've got the two fishermen at the start who seem to be there to introduce that there are sea monsters, set the plot into motion, only to never be seen again. There's this whole world and life underwater that I thought we were going to explore, only for Luca to leave in the second act and never return again. And I mean, even in that moment, Uncle Ugo is introduced. He presents himself as a kind of funny antagonist, also never to be seen again, other than in the end credits. So is that a payoff? And with that, I just felt like this movie could have been more, you know? It felt too simple and almost kind of cliche at times. You know, one of those movies that are like, the character needs money to get the thing they want, so they enter a competition to win the prize money, and then against all the odds, they win the competition! Except, in this one, they don't actually buy the thing they wanted, because one of them realises they don't actually want that, and the other one gives up their prize to let them have the thing they want. And I actually liked that ending. It was bittersweet, you didn't know whether to cry or smile, and no, I'm not ignoring that Disney got cold feet, but I typically come to expect expect Pixar to do more than that, you know? I want a thought-provoking story that makes me question everything. And I remember when Onward was coming out, lots of people were saying, well, this doesn't feel like a Pixar movie, and I feel like after they saw the film, probably ate their words a bit. But for me, Luca did kind of make me think, well, 
that didn't really feel like a Pixar movie. And maybe it was just the animation style, which I thought was fine, but it was no Toy Story 4 or so where I was just like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm not going to stop talking about this. Like, it could have easily been made by DreamWorks or Illumination, and I wouldn't have really batted an eye. And that's not a bad thing. I did really enjoy this movie. I just it didn't really feel like Pixar's best, I guess. It would be relatively low on my tier list, maybe. And yeah, I'm sorry to end this on a really negative note. I didn't mean to do that. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and watch another video and check out my Patreon here and in the description down below. Now I've just got to kind of sit here for 15 seconds because I wanted the end cards to last 20 seconds and I said that really quickly. And yeah, hope this pads up the runtime a little bit as well. Just, just thanks for getting my watch time in. <laughs>